My name is Jana Best, and I work at the 911 Customer Care Center in Piscataway, New Jersey. For at the 911 Customer Care Center, how may I help you? My husband and I have been EMTs on the Donnellan Rescue Squad for 20 years now. We are the old folks on the department. They actually address us as squad mom and squad dad. Jana Best uh, has been on my team now for over eight years. She's the type of person that would help you with anything, and she has very little free time. She literally divides her time between work and volunteering. She had asked me if she could use her own personal time uh, to go and volunteer during the, uh, the COVID-19 crisis. And through communication with HR, they were able to relate to us that there is an option for her to take the full-time leave. Prior to the pandemic, I was on duty with the Donnellan Rescue Squad from the time I got off of work at 4 p.m. until I had to get ready for work the following morning at 6 o'clock. Now with this leave, I'm able to dedicate myself full time to the squad and try to get some rest in between. Every time we get dispatched for a COVID patient, we're having to put on isolation gowns, goggles. We're using now P100 masks. And once we have finished transporting the patient, we have about three hours worth of decontamination of our ambulance. County from 86 BLS2, we're clear from Robert Wood Johnson Somerset, headed back to station to decontaminate. Having Jana full time is amazing. Not only is she able to respond quicker, but she's also able to respond to more of the daily calls. It's been it's been a blessing to have her. Volunteers are our backbone in this community, so to have Jana puts our mind at ease that uh, when someone has to make the call be picked up and brought to the hospital that Jan is going to be there. It takes a love of the people to be able to do what we do. You really have to care more about someone else than yourself. We may never get to hear the words thank you, but we know what houses people are alive in today because of what we've done. And that's amazing. You get to sit back and you just look and you go, yeah, we did that. Despite the risks that I'm at for myself, I still feel called to be out there serving the residents of my community, providing them the medical care that they require. Uh, good afternoon, good evening, and good morning. Thanks to Jana Best and her husband and all of the uh, the first uh, frontline responders out there. It's National EMS Week, so we're happy to share that story with you about Jana and what she's doing to serve her community. Uh, it really means so much and really a, a purpose uh, that we all have. Uh, it's showing through here for Verizon folks. I've got 12.03 on the East Coast, uh, setting the stage for uh, what we will uh, cover today. Uh, in a few minutes, Guru will join us for a conversation with the uh, the president and co-founder of the Born This Way Foundation, uh, Cynthia Germ uh, Germanata. An inspiring conversation, so you don't want to miss that. A couple of updates for you, though, before we go on. Let's go ahead and roll the first video, Chris, if we can. Uh, yesterday, we were telling you about some of that flooding out in Michigan, and it looks uh, like a peaceful setting from far away that you're seeing in this drone video from our response team, but you get up close and you see uh, some of the dam breaks that they're dealing with there, historic flooding. All of our V-teamers and families are safe. You can see we're on the ground with our response team uh, serving the community. Uh, we were there Wednesday just hours after the evacuation of 10,000 folks were announced. Uh, it's good to see that uh, we were there. So uh, we'll continue to stay on the ground. Now, we come back and take a quick review of the week and everything that we went through. Uh, earlier this week, Cods and Christie announced the uh, return to business as usual. You can get all of the information that you need and resources uh, right on uh, VZ Web or the street or through the inside Verizon. Remember, you can download that to see uh, what our plan is to return to business as usual. And you should also be hearing from your leaders. We also announced this week 5G is coming to San Diego. That's our 35th city. Uh, it will light up uh, at the end of next week. We celebrated two years uh, with Visible uh, yesterday, hearing from Miguel uh, and Katie and the team over there. Congratulations to those. And uh, just earlier today, we launched our graduation commencement series. Uh, on LinkedIn Live. Those are run each Friday through uh, June 12th. So a lot of things going on there. But I wanted to share this next story with you. It's about one of our own. Uh, Shirley uh, Leeson is a manager of organ organizational effect and effectiveness in Basking Ridge. Uh, right now, she is supporting her sister, a Brooklyn nurse who contracted COVID-19 and has made news uh, headlines around the world. Take a look at this story.
My name is Shirley Leeson. I've been with Verizon for five years and uh, I am a manager in organizational effectiveness. My sister is Sylvia Leroy. She's a nurse at Brookdale Hospital in Brooklyn. She contracted COVID-19, was put on a ventilator, and suffered a cardiac arrest. My sister was whisked into the operating room and her baby Esther was born via C-section and sent to the NICU and my sister was put back on life support. My day starts very early before six o'clock in the morning. I'm getting calls to know how my sister is doing, how she spent the night. It's also with her social worker to understand how I might navigate insurance. A lot of my hours in the evening are spent doing research. I have three children of my own that I try to manage as best I can because they're also in school. That hasn't stopped. Verizon made it so easy for me to focus on my family in my hour of need. I did not have to worry about income. I did not have to worry about the work that I normally do with my team. And at that moment, what mattered most was just stabilizing, caring for the family and advocating for my sister. And there are just no words um, that could really express um, how I feel and my level of gratitude and just really being proud um, of the company that I work for. Throughout all of this, my team was praying for me. They were reaching out to me. They sent dinners to my home every evening, which was so helpful. I saw humanity in ways I think I've never experienced before in my entire life. And I am forever grateful for this family that I have here at Verizon. I have so many dreams for Esther, but the most important one is that she gets to know her mom. My sister Sylvia, is warm, cheerful, she's a loving mom, and she's a good daughter and she's a great sister. We're very close, we've always been very close. And so if she doesn't have a voice, I have to have one for her. And really, I just wanna be able to see my sister again. And I want to see her spend time with her children and watch them grow up. I saw my sister just the other day on camera and when I called out her name, she perked up and she turned a little bit. And in that brief moment, I saw the old Sylvia. Um, and so we we're very hopeful that Sylvia will have a meaningful recovery if we can get her into the right place. Oh, thank you. Uh to uh, Shirley for sharing that story. I wanna give you an update. Sylvia continues to make positive progress as does baby Esther who is out of ICU, but still not home yet. And uh, I tell you stories like that and uh, one of Jana Best and so many that we've shared along the way are the stories about who we are as a company. It's our heart and soul and it's uh, the reason and the purpose uh, that we do the work we do. We, we talk about, we create the networks that move the world forward. And uh, that's more than just the networks and the, the ground and the things that connect us. It's about us as humans. And I, I wanted to share those stories with you today to remind you, and that's what we wanna continue doing for you here on Up to Speed. So if you have an example of something you wanna share, you can always reach out to me directly. You can uh, send us emails to good at verizon.com, but uh, also to know what our, what our teammates are going through and to see how we really are there. And uh, we really are, uh, a V team family for one another. So uh, Shirley, best of luck to you and your family. And thank you for sharing that story. So I uh, want to uh, go to a few things before we go to, uh, to Guru. Let's go and take the first slide here, uh, Chris, if we can. Uh, this is uh, uh, pictures of some of our uh, employees' kids here. Uh, Rajiv Patel, who's on the BBG team in San Jose, California, and his family, uh, driven by his son, uh, have raised nearly $30,000 to give masks to healthcare workers and volunteers in their community. Way to go. Uh, love seeing stuff like that. Next uh, slide, we continue to honor those who have served. Uh, there are still lots of volunteer opportunities to get us through um, Military Appreciation Month, like Carry the Load and Operation Gratitude that families can do in their homes. They can do it right there in their, their communities. You can visit verizon.com slash volunteer for more information. The next slide, usually, you know, going into this weekend is Memorial Day weekend. And this is a, a picture from last year at the honor table that we had in Basking Ridge, where we 
uh, honor those who have um, given the ultimate sacrifice to keep uh, keep us going here in the country. And uh, go and play the video, if you will, Chris. Uh, this is a, a touching moment. Uh, a member of our team, uh, Verizon Business Group's Brian Johnson and his calls to give veterans one last salute. And this is our last salute as well. He's a solutions architect from Cincinnati. Uh, he volunteers with Bugles across America. Uh, with a request from as far as 100 miles away, Brian aims to give as many families as possible a sense of closure and the respect every military veteran deserves. So as we go through this uh, weekend where we normally come together and have barbecues and we're cooking out, uh, just remember to uh, follow your local uh, your local government's recommendations. Be safe. Uh, find ways to do that, uh, but also have a, uh, a good weekend. But remember why it is uh, Memorial Day exists. Uh, so that will wrap it up for me today. Uh, we will be back with you on Tuesday talking all about our network and how we're ready for the hurricane season. Now I'm going to go over to my friend Guru uh, to take it away for Wellness Friday. Guru, how are you? Hey, hey, good, Jeremy. How are you? Good, thanks. Good. Hey, thanks. Uh, thanks so much, Jeremy. And hi, everyone. I am uh, Guru Garapan. Good to be back on Up to Speed Live today for Wellness Friday. Uh, as you probably heard already, we've got a very special guest joining us today, Cynthia Germanota. Cynthia is the president of Born This Way Foundation, which she co-founded with her daughter, Lady Gaga, in 2012, with the goal of supporting the wellness of young people and empowering them to build a kinder and a braver world. Under Cynthia's leadership, Born This Way Foundation has connected with tens of thousands of young people across the U.S and around the world, launched innovative youth-focused fo programming and also conducted cutting-edge research to improve understanding of mental wellness. Cynthia is also a goodwill ambassador for mental health for the UN's World Health Organization. And on Born This Way Foundation, it has been a key partner to, in, in work we are doing across Verizon, Verizon Media around mental health for the past two years. You know, I've of course met Cynthia and also we participated in the Born This Way Foundation hashtag Be Kind 21 Day Initiative and also hosted an evening of powerful storytelling at our Build Studio in New York City. We've been fortunate to have uh, both Ma Maya Smith, Executive Director of Born This Way Foundation, join employees for an important conversation on understanding mental health and suicide prevention. And last summer, we were privileged to have Cynthia, as I mentioned earlier, to come on one of our company meetings to join me in a conversation on mental health at work, in schools, and the media. So, Cynthia, welcome. Thank you for being here today with us. It's, it's an honor, privilege, and uh, it's so great to be talking with you again after many months, of, of course, last time we met in person. So, thanks for being here. Yes, and Guru, it's so nice to see you again. I want to thank you and the wonderful team at Verizon for having me back, for supporting our work. Uh, it's really an honor to have such an important conversation with you. And I really hope that everybody is well and safe. And wow, some of the videos that I saw while I was waiting are really extraordinary, the work that Verizon is doing. So congratulations. Thank you, Cynthia. So I wanna start with the, with the lighter one. I, I follow you on Instagram and I really enjoy the tea with Mrs. G. So I have to ask, first of all, what tea are you drinking? And for, <laughs> for the VTMers who are watching who may not be familiar, can you tell us a little bit about Tea with Mrs. G? Yes, absolutely. Well, and so the tea, let's, let's spill the tea early on. The tea that I'm drinking today is Echinacea. I've been drinking quite a lot of that to try to, to build up my immune system. But um, so Tea with Mrs. G started, first of all, uh, on the road and to my daughter's fans, I'm Mrs. G or Mama G. So that's just a kind of a, a common name, a common term that I'm, I'm referenced as. And at our foundation, we have daily check-ins with our team because we want to remind them that their mental and their physical health is the most important thing right now. So Tea with Mrs. G is really an opportunity for me to also check in on my community, uh, on the foundation community. And I have to tell you, it wasn't really an easy thing to do. It was my way of leaning into my vulnerabilities with the mm -hmm. pandemic. Uh, it really started with me just sharing how I was feeling, what my emotions were, and it has now turned into uh, what I hope are really daily words of affirmation and inspiration for those that are listening. And it's just one of the many ways that we let our community know that our team is still 
here for them during these challenging times. So that's G with Mrs. G. <laughs> that's great. And, <laughs> and just, just to build on that, and then I, I want to talk a little bit about Bond This Way. In your videos, you've shared your thoughts, you know, in a range of topics from how we can refocus and, and what we're going through right now, focusing on minds, leaning into hope, to naming our emotions and adjusting to the new normal. I want to double click on this because, you know, I think having a positive mindset and being gentle with ourselves is so crucial to getting through times like these. So can you elaborate a little bit on this and what you've talked about recently? Absolutely. This is a time of what I call the firsts for many people, particularly the young people that we're working with. This is the first time that many of them are experiencing this type of a crisis. Uh, I think it's the first time in history that the entire world is trying to solve one problem together. So we're all facing disruption um, of our daily lives and experiencing a range of emotions. Um, fear being probably the greatest one of those. We're in that fight or flight mode. Fear is probably the greatest emotion that a human being can have. The good news is that it's trumped by kindness and by compassion. Um, my daughter talks a lot about it's okay to not be okay. And lately I've been talking about what I call two clouds that are hanging over our heads, a cloud of uncertainty and a cloud of a lack of control. And we decided just to name that moment and to address it head on with people so that they could understand where their feelings were coming from. So for me, it's just really being an open and honest about what our feelings are, uh, giving some tips on how to deal with that. For some people, it's volunteering, um, maybe talking with friends. Uh, for others, it's barely trying to get out of bed and tie their shoes and get on with their day. So we're seeing a wide range of people that are coping and dealing with it okay and others that are not. Um, I recently did a tea with Mrs. G that I'd love to share with you mm -hmm. because I, I just thought it was an incredible example. Um, uh, it's a woman named Judy Salerno. She's the president of the New York uh, Academy of Medicine, was in retirement, came out of retirement to actually go back uh, into the community and volunteer. And it's just a really wonderful discussion about her bravery, what she's facing, what she's seeing on the front line, uh, which I think is extraordinary with the, the frontline work, workers. I mean, we at Born This Way are preparing for what we really see as the next pandemic, which is in the mental health space. No, that's a very, very important point you bring up. And it, it's amazing. I see that, you know, not just our employees, but in the society, how much, you know, suddenly, of course, there's a lot of focus, but I don't, I mean, to your point, we're not doing enough. And, and that leads to, you know, Born This Way, kind of Be Kind, Be There initiative that you've been focused on. So I want to talk about the amazing work you're doing with Born This Way Foundation. I think it was earlier last week that you launched a new initiative with your partners, uh, jack.org, Be Kind, Be There. So tell us a little bit more. I think you kind of went into that in the last statement you made, but I want to <laughs> double click on that bit more about how much that's more important. And also the point you mentioned that it's okay to be not okay but how much that ties into being kind. Well, absolutely. Um, first, let me back up that, uh, just to reemphasize that we're a research-based organization. Everything that we do is evidence-based. We have youth at the forefront of our work. They're at the table, uh, providing insight on our programs. Um, and one thing we've learned from our research is that when a young person is in a time of crisis, they would prefer to talk to a peer instead of an adult. And there are many reasons for that that I can get into. But we also recognize that that peer is not necessarily equipped to lean into those difficult conversations. They don't have the confidence. They don't have the skill set to really ask those questions. And we were finding ourselves challenging young people to be there right now for one another, but not necessarily telling them how. So this tool um, that Jack.org uh, has developed and the campaign that we call be kind, be there, is exactly that. It's a way of being kind by being there for somebody. And it walks you through how to have those difficult conversations. It talks about the five golden rules. It gives you confidence about opening up that conversation with a peer um, and really reinforces the importance also of equipping young people early with the knowledge and the confidence uh, to recognize and respond to someone that's in a crisis. And we're seeing so much of that right now. And, and why, why do you think um, it's important to proactively equip ourselves with the knowledge 
to support support ourselves or others. I mean, you you talk about knowing this early and being proactive around that, even the five golden rules that you talk about. Why is that important? Well, I mean, you know, mental health should be discussed just as physical health. Um, If we have a physical ailment, most of us generally know who we would turn to. We have Mm -hmm. an MD. uh, Some of us might go to urgent care. Some may end up in the emergency room. But who's on your mental health team in -hmm. times of crisis? We don't find that people are proactive enough in defining that. So this, this we find, is just vitally important um, to identify that as early on as possible. Uh, Yesterday, I had the privilege of talking to a group of teens in Las Vegas, and they were really bravely sharing their experiences and their emotions. Uh, They feel right now that things have been taken from them, uh, you know, in a very, very challenging way. And they're not comfortable having these difficult conversations. So we've just been encouraging them to, and I encourage your entire team to Mm -hmm. at least spend five minutes on be there.org because it's really an incredible an incredible resource for having those difficult conversations no thank you for that I, i'm definitely going to make sure i'll follow <laughs> up as a talk with the team about i have, have as well, well. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think you, you brought up a very important point here which is who's on your team and when you think about who's on your mental health team and and the reason is we don't these are the things that build up over time right and if you don't think about and then it it many times it's too late or it's hard to fix it if you start building up. And most times on physical health, you start seeing symptoms sooner and you're able to read through that. So you're able to have the doctor or whatever it is and you work through that. So it's a very interesting point you bring up. And I think you're doing a great job bringing that awareness and research into that where it's gonna help people being proactive. Is it the right way to characterize when I think about it builds up over time and you have to be very, very proactive and start talking about it very, very early on? Oh, absolutely. Um, Half of the mental health issues develop by the age of 14, Mm -hmm. 75% of them by the early 20s. And unfortunately, they're generally not diagnosed for 10 to 11 years. So you're absolutely correct. Most issues that are identified have been chronic since a very, very young age. So I think you're absolutely thinking of it the right way. Uh, which is why our approach at Born This Way Foundation is to be preventive in nature, is to equip young people as early as possible with these tools so that they, they're equipped to deal with their struggles. Um, you know, we quite often look at young people as problems waiting for solutions. We don't agree with that at all. This is an incredibly um, proactive, uh, engaged generation that wants to do good in their communities, and we're just trying to help them live their best lives. Sure. And, and when you think about that, the tools we have and Born This Way Foundation, I mean, all of the work that's going on, I think in a physically connected world, was a little bit easier to recognize if somebody's struggling or, you know, you know to be there to help or uh, whatever it is. But do you think in the physical distance world we are living in right now, it's harder for people to recognize if a friend is struggling? And what are some of the ways people can support their friends today, given they can't physically be be there with them? Yeah, it's a bit of a double-edged question because in some ways it's difficult because of these grave feelings of isolation that we have, but also this is a time more than ever when technology is really our friend. And, you know, we have uh, flipped the perception, if you will, of social distancing. We like to talk about physical distancing while remaining socially connected. And young people live online, they're used to it, and we're finding that they're they're finding community online. That's that's what's helping them and saving them now by, you know, whether it's Zoom, whether it's texting, whether it's it's talking to their friends online. That's not to say that we aren't seeing incredibly difficult challenges. Uh, The rate of suicide is increasing. Mm-hmm. rates of depression. Depression is the leading disability globally now. Less than 1% of global aid is spent on mental health. So we are definitely seeing challenges, but we're also seeing tremendous awareness now. Uh, and we, we've seen really positive stories among, among young people along, along with the bad. Um, I, I'd, I'd like to maybe highlight one. 
there's a group of college students in Indiana, you know, mm -hmm. in their off time, they can't go to school, so they're at home now. Uh, they started what uh, began as just a Facebook page where they were directing people in their communities to food resources. Mm -hmm. They quickly learned that people were lacking other resources, that they didn't know where to turn for so many things. That has now become a full-fledged app uh, built by these, these incredibly brave uh, college students at Indiana University. And it's a source of resources now in their communities, including things like mental health. So mm -hmm. we're seeing challenging situations, but we're also seeing you know, the heroes rise. What's the app called again, Cynthia? I just want to... Yeah, that app, you know what? We have to get you the name, and I think okay, that'll be good. Is we can, we can yeah, we'll be, yeah, we'll be, I'll make sure to, uh, you know, we can share that because that's important. I think also when you see great things like this happen, encouraging and motivating them in whatever form is also helpful, right? Because it also helps the broader community think that way. Yeah, so that's but there's so many, there's sure. so many others like that that we can get for you. Let me give you another one. Sure. There's a, a brother sister team. Uh, this started when they were very young. I think she was 13 and, and he was 11 years old, her brother, and she was having a great deal of depression, suicidal ideation, and her brother is a techie, so Verizon will appreciate this. So um, he developed an app for her called Not Okay. And in that app, you can name five people that are in your bubble, that are your trusted source of people. And if you are feeling in any kind of crisis, you hit that button on your app and those five people are alerted. So wow. we just have so many incredible stories like this. Wow. That's part of our channel kindness platform yeah. uh, where we've curated hundreds and thousands of stories of young people. Um, we're, we're proud, I have to give a little note here. It got the attention of a book publisher, Macmillan, and, and it's coming out as a book in September. It's called wow. Channel Kindness. Um, it's curated by my daughter. Um, there's uh, footnotes by her in all of the, the different chapters, and it's just incredible stories of resilience and bravery in communities, but wow. led by young people. Yeah, so just one last question on the, on when you talk about youth and young people, you address this a little bit. I mean, you know, especially those who are, when you think about missing their prom, high school and college graduations, of course you said, look, these are the times they can be connected more technologically and having apps and all the different ways they're doing. Is there anything else you would tell young people for getting through this time? Well, first I wanna tell them their feelings are absolutely valid. That, it, you know, it, it stinks that they have to miss these milestones and these incredible memories in their lives. And I think they should allow themselves to have those feelings, whatever that might may be. We also think they should celebrate in whatever way possible and focus on what they can they have control over right now and we've seen really really wonderful moments of celebration online on zoom we even had my daughter's birthday party on zoom and it, and it was a beautiful thing to see i also want to tell those young people that everyone around them is doing their best to try to help them celebrate these milestones the silver leaning lining that I see is the resilience that is developing among young people that they may not realize it now, but it's going to be something that will stay with them for the rest of their lives. Um, I'll tell, share two quick things with you. I just visited my mom uh, who's 92 and she's, she's ill now, not COVID related, but she, she said something that just really stuck with me. She said, and I think the analogy for me is graduation where you flip your hats in the air her, her analogy was when this is all done, I think we should all get together in a group and throw our masks up in the air. And I, I, I love that. But I also want to share um, that my daughter's doing something with former President uh, Obama and his wife, Michelle. It's called Dear Class of 2020. Mm -hmm. And she's giving a commencement address uh, in just a few days time, along with some other wonderful you know, people that are, are doing the same. So that is one way that I know she's trying to reach out and help young people celebrate and we'll do everything we can to make it special for them. No, that's, uh, that's great. Th I mean, thank you. And actually, you know, on that note, we are actually, Verizon uh, is driving around a graduation, Hans Pressburg, who's uh, a CEO chairman of Verizon, along with, we've got Bill, Clinton, Bill Clinton and others doing something similar. So that's great to see uh, what, how we are coming along for the young and youth. And, and as you said, I think it is going to build a lot of resilience in a lot of grit 
uh, compassion part of this process. I know it'll be a challenging journey, but but I do feel on the other side there will there is going to be a lot of goodness. So so I want to I want to go to the uh, next topic, which is around kindness. You you talked about this. I know kindness is a big focus uh, of Born This Way Foundation. Can you talk about the benefit of forming habits of kindness and the impact it can have on our mental health, specifically how it can help us manage through a crisis like what we're experiencing now? I did last year do a 21-day challenge, and I posted every day what I did around 21-day kindness challenge. It was amazing, and how much behavior shift it brings in and forces you in many ways, even though it's forcing kindness, it's a very good thing. I would love to hear a bit more about that. Of course, I love to talk about this, but as I mentioned, we're preparing for what we see in the next pandemic, and that is in the mental health space. Uh, we've done quite a bit of research in this area, and we've learned that there's a direct connection between kindness and mental health. Uh, we surveyed thousands of young people, and those that reported living in kind communities, whether that was their homes, schools, communities, or the workplace, had substantially higher mental health scores. And there's a number of other studies um, that will back that up. So um, we know that now is really a time of very, very serious mental health struggles. If we move that into the workplace, for example, and specific things that you do, we partnered with the Chamber of Commerce on a campaign called the Business of Kindness. And they studied that. And some of the outputs from that were employee retention, mm -hmm. uh, reduction in absenteeism, improved productivity. And some of the things that were implemented were simple and very actionable. For example, checking in regularly on employees and simply asking how they're doing was a game changer. You know, we're all human beings. So, you know, taking that, going that extra mile, really caring about individuals and talking about that. Um, offering um, offering uh, minority and female-based affinity groups and organizations was also very, very, very important. So these are just some of the ways that kindness can be implemented in the corporate world, for example. And then of course there's Be Kind 21, which we've done also with the Chamber of Commerce. Um, I think Deloitte is a great example of how uh, they have implemented that in the workplace. We know from our research that if you do something for 21 days, it can become a habit. And we're proving that out with kindness. So by integrating it really into the workforce, it does go to the bottom line. Uh, we hear a lot about economic currency, financial currency. My daughter talks about something we all have, which is kindness currency. Mm -hmm. We all have it to give, and, and it, it really goes a long way toward uh, impacting your mental health. Oh, that's great. Kindness currency, I agree. I, you know, it's, it's a very, and something we've talked a lot about, you and I think when you were there, we've talked about at Verizon Media is around zero tolerance for hate and the effects of pandemic is having on communities. You know, when you think about, this is the other side, particularly the Asian community, we've seen people are hurting, not just physically, but psychologically. What are some ways we channel kindness and compassion and practice more tolerance? Yeah, we, there's no place for hate, as they say. In fact, that's a wonderful organization. Unfortunately, hate crimes existed before this pandemic, and now we're seeing an in increase, particularly in certain communities, the Asian community being one of them. Um, I have to go back to kindness. We know empirically that if it's integrated into our lives, whether that's schools, communities, um, workplaces, um, it, it just goes a long way toward helping to reduce that inclusion. Um, mm -hmm. is another, you know, huge way of that in, in any way, shape, or form. And I, I know, and I'm sure that Verizon continues to support many types of inclusion and tolerance, you know, practices and policies. Um, so that, that's our heart is, our heart is with kindness and integrating that into, into the work environment oh, and every great. environment. And, and I, I think we, we need more of that and, and more what you do with Born This Way Foundation and, and really promoting kindness. Mm -hmm. I think the more people can learn. A lot of times these are all tips that comes in from leaders or, or foundations yeah. like yours, you know, yeah. very helpful. So thank you for that. I want to- I, I also wanna, feel, uh, I, I just wanted to mention, I also feel, you know, some people roll their eyes when mm -hmm. they hear kindness, right? It's like, oh, you know, it's this mushy thing. 
you know, and I talk to young people a lot to, to don't misinterpret kindness with weakness. You can still be an incredible leader and make tough decisions, but do them with a kind heart. Mm. You know, there's a, there's a way to do it without a mean spiritedness, you know, to it. So um, just, just a point that I wanted to make, um, particularly in the workplace. Kindness is not weakness. Now that's a great way to not weakness. <laughs> not a great way to say that. I want to uh, wrap up. Talk about your leadership. You know, as a leader, you know, how are you taking care of yourself so that you can be there for your team, for the community broadly? I mean, there are so many people who follow you and listen to you. I would love to hear, you know, what you do in terms of tips and things that we can learn from that. Yeah, sure. I'll I'll share what I can and. Maybe you try some, maybe you think they're off the wall. I don't know. <laughs> but um, I've added a, a discipline that I, I, I used to practice before, but not as a discipline. And I ground myself every morning, of course, with my tea. I got to put my plug in for my tea. But I also, um, I write in a gratitude journal every morning, three things mm -hmm. that I'm grateful for. And I also read a bit of a philosophical passage. It could be from Deepak, it could be you know, Mark Nepo. Uh, it's not religious in nature, but it's something that gets me centered for my day. Mm. And I, I just find that that's been really, really important. I'm doing my best to practice self-care. Um, you know, I, I love ballet. I love journaling, um, you know, and I love working on my good teas, of course. Um, I also don't want people to feel pressure. You know, this is a really challenging time. If you want to sleep till noon, you know, we're telling people sleep till noon. I mean, I don't have that luxury, but I, I do sleep late sometimes. This is not a time to try to get a six pack abs, you know, and get fit, you know, and thin, although moving is very important. We're encouraging, mm -hmm. you know, everyone to exercise. So those are the few of the things that I'm working on. But the biggest thing I'm trying to do is model behavior of resilience during this time for my team. And believe me, I have my moments, you know, my, I'm first and foremost a mom. My girls are not home with me now. I miss them ter terribly. Mm -hmm. So I have my meltdowns. But what I'm trying to model to my team is that we're making short-term sacrifices for long-term gain. And we talk a lot about that. And we try as a team to just, just talk that out. So those are just a few of the things that, that, that I'm trying. And we have so many that we can share with your team. I mean, we have people that are writing letters, including myself, thank you letters to frontline workers. Um, I just have to share this story because I'm sure you see it at Verizon. I saw one frontline worker, a nurse, she had come out of the hospital just to breathe some air. Mm -hmm. And she took a selfie and she said, you know, I don't know what my life's going to be like after this, but I know I'm not going to be okay. So we have such tremendous admiration and respect for what they're doing. And we're writing thank you letters to frontline workers. We're encouraging you know, kids to write thank yous to their school teachers because their school teachers and their parents and themselves, we're all trying to figure out this you know, homeschooling you know, mm -hmm. together as well. So back to there being a lot of firsts for everybody. We didn't ask for them, but we had them. So let's try to, to be kind and compassionate in the process. No, thank you so much, India. I think the, the key word or key phrase that you said is modeling the behavior of resilience. Right. I think that's, that's so important as a leader, um, you know, your, your kids, your community, your employees, it's everybody who's watching and trying to learn, right? These are the moments that you can learn. And again, your point, you're not trying to get the six pack up, right? I think that's not the point here, right? <laughs> don't, don't be hard on yourself on that way, but modeling that behavior I really love that uh, as a takeaway. So thank you again, Cynthia, for being with us here. I, I don't know if you want any any other final remarks you want to make as we go into this Memorial Day weekend uh, that you want to share with everyone here. Well, uh, maybe you have one extra day to deal with, so I want you to enjoy that. But I also want to share with everyone that um, simply by staying home and complying, you know, wearing your mask, doing the physical distancing, that really is enough. So don't beat yourself up that you have to, you know, do many, many other things and pile that on. We're all contributing simply by doing that. And that's, you know, really going a long way to help keep, up, keep us all safe and healthy. So thank you again so much for shining the light on this important topic. Uh, we love our Verizon family, and I hope that we can 
uh, continue this partnership. So thank you very much, Guru. Yeah, no, thank you so much, Cynthia. And I think part of also, we, we launched something called Yahoo Life a few weeks back, which is really focused on mental health, physical well-being, emotional well-being as well, and a lot of focus on youth. And, and I, I'm sure we, our teams are already thinking about what else we could do to spread the word, share a lot of these tips. And as you said, I think modeling resilience, I think that's going to be the core part of this journey as humanity for everybody. And, and I also want to dedicate this to, as you said earlier, to the class of 2020. You know, I think I have the key is ready for anything. Now that's what we're calling it. And this resilience will build that into it. So thank you so much for joining us. It is always great talking to talking with you. It was amazing meeting last year. And as I said, it was very insightful and imagined really helpful for everyone tuning in, taking some of the notes. We'll definitely share that. And then for those in the US, I want to wish you a very happy Memorial Day weekend. As Cynthia just said, that we have one extra day, but also give thought to all those who sacrificed in your service. I encourage you to take time to connect uh, with those close to you, disconnect from work, rejuvenate, uh, and have a wonderful weekend. Stay safe, stay strong, and we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.